Transmission-based precautions are to be used in conjunction with standard precautions when providing care to patients. John is being cared for in droplet precautions to reduce the risk of transmission of infectious agents to other patients, the environment and staff who provide care to him. The personal protective equipment, or PPE, required for anyone entering the room should be readily available on a trolley outside the room. This includes alcohol-based hand rub, an adequate supply of alcohol impregnated cleaning wipes and sodium hypochlorite, non-impervious gowns, a supply of N95 or P2 masks available in all sizes to be used if the patient requires aerosol generating <coughs> procedures, an ample supply of surgical masks if you anticipate to be within one metre of the patient in most instances, a surgical mask should be selected. Protective eyewear to be worn over prescription eyeglasses as well. General waste bin large enough to dispose of the contaminated PPE after use. Tennille arrives outside John's room and notes the specific isolation signage. It is important to put the PPE on in the correct order and especially important to remove it in the correct order so that you reduce the risk of contaminating oneself, your colleagues, other patients and the clinical environment. Hand hygiene is the first step when commencing any type of procedure, ensuring that the alcohol-based hand rub is allowed to dry before proceeding. A non-impervious gown is required. This is applied next, ensuring that the gown is tied up at the back of the neck and around the waist. It is important that the correct type of mask is selected. In most situations, a surgical mask is used for droplet precautions. As John requires a nebulizer, an N95 mask should be worn, as this is considered to be an aerosol generating procedure. An N95 mask should be applied by separating and lifting the two bands over your head. After moulding the nose piece to ensure a secure facial fit, to perform the fit check with your mouth slightly open, inhale and exhale. You should be able to see the mask collapse slightly on inhalation and expand upon exhalation. Protective eyewear is required to be worn by Tennille as she will be within one metre of John. If fogging of the protective eyewear is present, readjust mask and repeat fit check. Hand hygiene is performed. Using a non-touch technique, you can now enter the patient's room. Hi John, how are you going? Oh, not great. Still feeling short of breath? Once inside the patient's room, hand hygiene is performed. I've got a normal saline nebulizer for you. Okay. Uh -huh. Non-sterile gloves are applied, ensuring that the cuffs of the gown are tucked in under the gloves to ensure that there is no skin exposed. Now you can have contact with the patient so John, and their environment. Your you to tell me your name and birthday. Okay. This is just going to last five to ten minutes. Just take some nice big slow breaths. Excellent. How are you feeling? Oh, much better, thanks. Much yeah. better? Excellent. How's the nausea going? After Tennille has ensured her patient is comfortable, she removes her gloves in the room as they are likely to be the most contaminated. Immediately after their removal, 
hand hygiene should be performed. Tennille can now exit the patient's room. Alright, I'll be back soon. Okay, thanks. Tennille removes her gown. As the gown is not bloodstained, it can be disposed of in the general waste. Hand hygiene is again performed. The protective eyewear is now removed, followed by the mask. As the protective eyewear can be used again, it is important that they are wiped down with the alcohol impregnated cleaning wipes before returning them for use. Hand hygiene is again performed. During the course of your work at Alfred Health, we have a commitment to use personal protective equipment when providing care to all our patients.